Teresa's feeling better. And uh, I tell you what, God's good. Amen? We want to welcome those that are viewing online today. I'm trying to look at you and connect to your minute. Please hit the like button or the share button and bring some more folks on with us today. And I know this will be a great time in the Lord for them that weren't able to come out in person, but they can be with us today by way of live stream. Amen. Well, this has been an eventful week. We're going to have a time of prayer before we leave out of here today, intercessory prayer. We've been praying every Wednesday night for our nation, for our world, for our leaders. This week we heard the news about our president and the first lady coming down and contracting this awful thing called COVID-19 or coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I'm glad my president is already doing better. Amen. Come on, we're going to hold him up in prayer. We've been praying every Wednesday night, but we hold him up in prayer. And uh, we're holding the First Lady up, all of our leaders, anybody really that has been suffered uh, with that and has had to walk through that. A lot of prayer going up. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I still believe Isaiah 53 today. And in Isaiah 53, the prophet declared, He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon him. And with his stripes, come on church, I said with his stripes we are healed. I'm mean, glad you know the healer today. Come on, let's just love on the Lord today. Come on, Father, we just love you today. Jesus, we thank you. You're the healer today. You're the healer of body, soul, and spirit. We've come today to worship you, Lord, whether it's in person or online today. We're gathering together in your name. And what power there is in the name of Jesus this morning. Father, we love on you. Bless us, Lord, those that are a part of the service today. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, God's word would penetrate our hearts. Your spirit would do a work in our life and take us from glory to glory to glory once again. We love you today, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. We'll give somebody an elbow or a fist bump or just a wave or something. Smile at them. Whatever you're comfortable doing, amen. Let's put our hands together and make a joyful noise. Let's worship the Lord together.
hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not all of us proclaim to have a music talent. Some are better than others. But to the Lord, it doesn't matter. Lift your voice, proclaim His name, sing to the King. Amen. He loves us and He loves to hear us worship and sing. One of these days, very, very soon, we are going to take a flight. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? Amen. And soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to
won't it be wonderful? Ending all this trouble, cares of the soul. Won't it be wonderful? Because yeah. I'll be walking and talking with Christ, the supernal one. Won't it be wonderful there? Think about it. Oh, praising, adoring, the matchless eternal one. Won't it be wonderful? I'd rather be than worshiping in the house of the Lord. Amen? Come on, let's give Jesus a hand offering of praise. Hallelujah. Our ushers are getting ready. We're going to receive our tithe and offering today. and We're going to just wait on the Lord here. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your giving. And um, I tell you, today is a great day to serve the Lord. And uh, 
thank the ones online that are watching. I know some have yet to be able to come back in in-person services. We love you today. Thank you for being faithful. We have many people that, though they're not able to come in person, they still send their tithe and offering, and they support the work of the Lord. You know what? God honors faithfulness. Amen. And we're so thankful for that. And we're thankful for you. I'm glad we were able to come today. Amen. My goodness. You know, I told somebody, another pastor friend this week, you know, he said, well, we're still not, you know, fully back. We're not everybody. I said, yeah, I know. I think most of us are in that uh, place, but I can think back. Uh, no. Sometimes when we go through the storm, we go through places, but he not only walks with us out of it, but while we're in it, how many is glad he walks with us while we're walking through the thing? He doesn't leave us by ourselves. He don't forsake us. He's with us every step that we take. He's been with you. He's been with Sure, we've had some disappointments. We've had some trials, some tests. Uh, Jesus one time said, if you suffer with me, that means, you know, sometimes things happen. But he went on to say, if you suffer with me, one day you'll also reign with me. Come on, can I get a witness here? You'll reign. How many's ready to reign with King Jesus today? Amen, Pastor. I'm ready to reign with him. For his kingdom is a kingdom of everlasting to everlasting. There's no end unto it. But one thing about it, the kingdoms of this world shall fall but his kingdom shall stand forever. Oh, praise God. It's not even time to preach, but I feel the preacher already. His kingdom will stand forever. Amen. While the kingdoms of this world will soon before him fall. Page 300 in the old blue hymnal, I think, We shall see the king when he comes. Woo, are you ready? Should the master call today? Would Jesus say, well done or go away? My home is for the pure. The what? The vow shall never stay. We shall see the king when he comes. Man, I cut my teeth on that song right there. Amen. Let's, let's pray over the offering today. Father, I want to thank you today for the tithe and the giving and all that you're doing in our church. And Father, I just ask you, Father, to just bless the gift and the giver today. Lord, uh, you're the supplier of all of our needs, and we acknowledge that today, Lord. Thank you for being that in our lives. And Lord, we praise you and we worship you, and we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give today. Come on, I got to sing a chorus of it anyway. Oh, and we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He's coming in power. We'll have the blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the King. One more time, let's sing it out loud. Oh, we shall see the King some morning. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes.
God. Aren't you glad for the cross today? Amen. Amen. Before I get into this today, we have special events. I hope you got a bulletin this morning as you came in. If you didn't get uh, find one as you exit there at the door as you leave or ask uh, an usher and they'll get you one. Uh, we got some things coming up this Saturday. Uh, Sherry and the ladies have a special luncheon plan and uh, a special speaker. Um, Sister Diana Scheich, I think, is the speaker. Am I telling that right? And uh, Sherry, what's the theme? Knowing your identity in Christ. How many want to know your identity in Christ? It's going to be a great time. They need to be here what time, Sherry? One o'clock. So ladies, come, be a part of that. Our men's group, we're doing an outing. Brother Dean's lined up us, a lunch outing. Uh, but we're going to meet here at the church, or leave. Let me say this correctly. We're going to leave. They're, they're going to leave here from the church at 1030 to go to Mike Lennon's for lunch. And, uh, you know, I don't want to make you hungry yet. I've still got to preach here. But uh, onion rings, fish, you know, all that. But the fellowship's the best part. And, uh, but probably want to be here before, you know, like around 10 or so, because they are going to have to leave right at 1030 here if you want to ride as far as that part goes. So, men, get together, be a part of what God is doing. And um, we have uh, seniors, uh, special seniors day I wanted to make mention of before I get into the message today. Uh, we've set aside a Sunday in October October the 18th. Everybody say the 18th. The 18th. Uh, we've set aside that Sunday uh, to honor all of our uh, seniors. And um, our church is blessed with, with many uh, wonderful people. But I believe you should honor uh, those that are elders. And I'm, I'm there now myself, I guess. I'm, I've I finally arrived. I, at least I get a senior discount at McDonald's sometimes. Um, but we want you to come and be a part of that special Sunday. We're going to honor all of our seniors on that special day. You're, you're worthy of that honor. And we want you to sense that and feel that. And, uh, and so uh, we got some special things planned for the service. Kenny's going to minister in a special song and some other things. So come for sure. Mark that down. Bring, bring somebody. Uh, bring somebody with you that Sunday. We want to honor them and let them know their value. How many knows every generation is valuable to God? Every generation is valuable to God. And uh, so remember that. The Saturday before that, uh, the 17th, there's a special memorial service here. As many of us know, Sherry's brother who lives out who lived out west, Danny, many of us grew up with Danny, loved Danny, knew him, went home to be with the Lord uh, several weeks back, but there's a special memorial service the family is planning here on that Saturday, the 17th, and it's at uh, 2 o'clock, and Sherry wanted me to let people know that you're more than welcome, they encourage you if you want to come by and be a part of that, it is on the 17th, okay? All right. Everybody say, thank the, Lord. thank the Lord. 
God is good. I love that up there. Pray for the nation. How many is praying for the nation? We're praying for the nation. If you have your Bible today, go with Pastor. Thank you for letting me mention a few of those things. In uh, Philippians chapter 2, it's a passage I uh, sort of went over some last week. I want to pick up there, and then I'm going to read out of the book of Acts chapter 5. While you're turning there, I'll give you just a minute. I want to say that we had a beautiful weekend this weekend at our church in Mount Washington, uh, our sister church, and it now has a new pastoral family, and they had their launch weekend, and uh, Pastor Jerry and Star Webb over here and Jeremiah are now the new pastors of the Legacy Center in Mount Washington, our sister church, and we're so happy for them, proud for them, and this, I guess, will be their last Sunday like this to be with us, and so at the end of the service, we all want to give them a good uh, farewell and, and, and love on them a little bit, but right now, if you're so thankful for what God's doing in this young couple's life, can we give Jesus a praise, a hand of praise for this? Amen. Isn't this wonderful? He's still calling. He's still raising up, and uh, I just know that this is going to be one of the greatest seasons pastor uh, and starve in your ministry in your life as you step out by faith God's going to honor this he's going to use you guys and he's already used you but he's going to use you in a tremendous way and uh, you're not that far away from us amen and we're still going to stay connected and work together how many knows we're laborers together with God we're not in competition we complement one another Amen. We need to get a hold of that in the kingdom of God. And so uh, I thank God for, for what God's doing. All right. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. So much of this is so good, but let's just look at some familiar passage here. Uh, the apostle wrote, Wherefore God, also talking about Jesus, God has highly exalted him. He's highly exalted Jesus. And given him a name which is above every name. I love this. That what at the name of, say it with me. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, now look at this admonition in verse 12. Wherefore, beloved, knowing all this, wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, Paul says, but now much more in my absence, what should we be doing knowing this? He says we should be working out our own salvation. Hello? With fear and trembling. You know, one day, every knee, whether willingly or unwillingly, whether it's at the judgment seat of Christ for the believer or the white great throne judgment for the, the wicked or the unbeliever, one day, I believe... Every knee, just like the passage says, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess, and everything is going to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Come on, can I get a witness today? Things on the earth, things above the earth, things under the earth, amen, all created, all living, all resurrected things are going to declare His glory, His honor, His majesty and once and for all when all the other kingdoms have failed us and fallen away his kingdom will stand alone and he will be declared king of kings lord of lords the one who is worthy of all of 
our praise. Amen. And the only thing I can add to that today, church, is this. Amen. If he's worthy then, he's worthy right now. Come on, can I get a witness? He's worthy right I don't have to wait to worship him. Fact is, if you're going to worship something, make sure it's something that can heal you when you're sick. Uh, something that can save you when you're lost. Uh, something that can find you when you've lost your way. Something that can raise you up out of your addiction. Something that can raise you up out of your pain and suffering. Oh, if you're going to if you're going to praise and bow and worship before something, make sure it's Yeshua. Make sure it's Jehovah. Make sure his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He's the only one that's worthy of my praise. He's the only one that's worthy to be glorified. It's not Muhammad. Oh, come on, somebody. It's not, oh, Buddha. It's not Hare Krishna. It's not some self-proclaimed Messiah. My friend, the only one that's worthy to be worshipped and praised is the one that this book speaks of from Genesis to Revelation he's still the fourth man in the fire he's still the will within the will he's still a still small voice he's still the fire he's still the wind oh hallelujah come on somebody ought to be praising him right now he said if we don't praise him the rocks will cry out he inhabits the praises of his people today Woo, hallelujah. Somebody in their living room just took a big old praise break. I know they did. Somebody at their kitchen table just stood up and started clapping to Jesus. Why? Because there's no distance in his presence. Uh, wherever you are, it can be your place of worship. Wherever you are, it can be your place of consecration because he's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your glory, of all the glory. And of all the honor. And listen, if we really understood that revelation, we would work out our salvation. Oh, come on now, Church of Lime. Come on, CA. We would work out our salvation with a healthy fear, a, a reverence, a holy reverence of God's authority. God's domain, God's sovereignty. Amen. He's the only one. Jesus is the only one. Every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess. Wow. Well, we could all go home right now. Praise the Lord. That was good. Thank you. I want you to look over to Acts chapter 5 with Pastor here a minute. Knowing that scripture is in your spirit now. Last week, we talked about our access to God's presence. And we talked about the different things that we have access to God through and power in. And last week, we talked about the power of praise and worship. How many is glad we can enter his gates with thanksgiving like we just did? Enter his courts. No more walls of separation in the court. Yard, not just a courtyard for the Gentiles at the tabernacle and the temple and a courtyard for the, no, the middle wall of partition was torn. Now we all have access to the throne room of heaven by the blood of Jesus. And we can access him through prayer. And word. We can access him through the word of God today. How many is glad every time you open up the Bible, God begins to speak to your heart and your life? It's our logos it's the written word. It's also our rhema word. It's the word that it, when I need a word in season at the right time, at the right place, I could read a passage that I might have read a thousand other times in my lifetime. But at that moment, Holy Spirit, as I read with his guidance and by faith and put my faith and trust, as I read it, it leaps off the page and it's a now word in season for my life, just what I needed. Anybody glad Holy Spirit's able to do that through his word today what power what accessibility to God we have today by way of the Holy Spirit and through God's holy word and I thank God for that I thank God for all of his word I thank God for the words that he speaks through his servants 
How many is glad through your lifetime you've had some men and women of God speak powerful words of encouragement to your life? I'm so thankful for those things. And we have access through the blood of the Lamb we talked about last week. Oh, it's a cleansing power. Anybody glad the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness? And it's a redemptive work. Oh, there's an exchange. You know, the Old Testament we talked about a little bit last week. It was a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a stripe for a stripe. And there was no one able to pay the price for my sin. No one seemingly able to fulfill that for me and my indebtedness to God because of Adam's failure in the garden. But God had a plan the whole time. And it's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He had a plan the whole time. No greater love hath any man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends anybody glad Jesus is our friend today God always had a plan and it was one day the Redeemer would go to the cross of Calvary and make a divine exchange it wouldn't be uh, my life for my sin it would be his life for he was the only one acceptable he was the only sinless sacrifice he was the only one without guile found in him what I mean by that is if I had tried to give my life for this this world it would have not it would have not been a good exchange I didn't have any redemptive qualities about me to be able to make that type of event happen but Jesus Christ was different he was God's son he was the living word he was the son of God but yet he was the son of man and he became the sons of men so that the sons of men might become the sons of God come on somebody give the Lord a praise offering in the house I don't know about you but I'm glad I've got a redeemer it's through the blood of Jesus. I, amen. It wasn't my life for your life. It was his life in exchange for your life today. And what a powerful, powerful access we have to God through the blood of Jesus. I grew up in a church where it was a common practice. You'd hear the saints of God praying around the altar and you could hear them saying, I claim the blood of Jesus. Hello? I plead the blood of Jesus. Can I tell you what? There's still power, power, wonder-working power. It's in the blood of the Lamb this morning. What access we have with the blood of Jesus today. And to go right along with that today, Philippians reminds us the power of the name of Jesus. No other name whereby which men might be saved. Here Philippians says, this is a name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Well, let's look more closely to the name of Jesus and what was going on in the first century church. The church in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 5. Look at what it says in verse 40. I want to start at verse 40 of Acts 5 and then we'll backfill the, the story here a bit. It says, and when... And to him they agreed, and they had called the apostles and beaten them and commanded that they, now watch this, that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. And they departed. Now this is talking about the apostles. They departed from the presence of the council, the, the Sadducees, the religious people of the day. They departed from the presence of this religious Sanhedrin council. How did they depart? They departed rejoicing. How could they rejoice? They were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. Are you with me, church? And they departed. Look at verse 42. And daily in the temple, did it hinder them? Did it stop them? Did they quit doing what God had called them to do? Verse 42 says, And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Mm. Now, back up to verse 12. What was going on in the early church during this time? Acts 5 and 12. Here's a little snippet 
What was going on there in that time? It says, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders brought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And it says, verse 14, the believers were added to the Lord. Multitudes, both men and women. Man, they were having a move of God in the early church. Insomuch they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the very least the shadow of Peter passing by night or by might might overshadow some of them. Are you getting the picture of how Holy Spirit was working so mightily among the people of God? Look, you know, it cost them something. Verse 18 says they got upset. The council, the religious group got upset. What did they do? They laid their hands on the apostles. They put them in common prison. But you can't, you can't lock up God. Come on, can I get a witness here? You can't lock up Holy Spirit. Verse 19 says, but an angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. Man, and brought them forth and said, go back, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Mm. So what happened? Jump on down to verse 25. Again, I'm just kind of backfill the story here. Verse 25. One of them came and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison, they're out of prison now. They're standing in the temple and teaching the people. And the captain with the officers brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And then look at over at verse 29. Then Peter... And the other apostles answered when they were brought before the council. They answered, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers. See, they weren't backing up away from Jesus. They were proclaiming the name of Jesus. Peter and the other apostles answered and said, you know, our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be both a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And so they couldn't lock him up. The angel of the Lord would just release him again, so they thought that they would threaten them some more and beat them some more and that's where we picked up verse 40 they called the apostles they beat them they commanded them they threatened them quit going out here and preaching and speaking in this name of jesus and the bible says that when they had been let go they rejoiced how many's glad your faith is in the lord today they rejoiced They rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They were told not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they finally let them go. But what did they do? They went out, and they bent daily, the Bible says, in the temple and in every house. They ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. I just want to say this today. Today in the 21st century, this is an hour, this is a moment on God's timetable. If we ever raised up as the church of Jesus Christ and declared the whole gospel of Jesus Christ and worked our salvation out with fear and trembling and were a light to a dark world, hear the pastor today, church alive, today is that day. This is the hour. This is the moment moment. Uh, Isaiah says arise and shine uh, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Jesus said let your light not be hid under a bushel. Don't let it be hid uh, from, from the world and from men but let your light shine forth before all men glorifying and magnifying me. He said you ought to be a city set on a hill. How many knows this is the day for the church to rise? 
rise up. Uh, this is the hour for us to stand up, uh, to speak out. Oh, hallelujah. I don't care what the naysayers say. I don't care what the atheists say. I don't care what those uh, who say there is no God says. I, I declare the counsel of the Lord Jesus Christ declared to us by the word of the living God and I declare that there is a name above all names. There is a name that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. His name is Jesus Christ and he's still worthy to be glorified in my life. Oh, if you believe it, church alive, come on one more time. Let's take a praise break. You know, the world needs to see the church praising him. The world needs to see the church worshiping him. The world needs to see you and I as a city set on a hill shining the light of Jesus everywhere we go. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The name of Jesus is the most powerful name that I know of today, church. Um, amen. They were threatened not to preach in that name. Don't teach in that name. Uh, but they had no other choice. Um, they, they said we ought to obey God rather than man. Uh, and we're going to preach it till the day we die. They kept preaching. They kept teaching. Every day they were in somebody's home, somebody's house. Uh, I got news for the news media. I got news uh, for the, uh, the political leaders. Uh, you can't shut the church down. Uh, you can't silence the church. Uh, Jesus said, I'm building this church. Uh, Hitler couldn't do it. Uh, others couldn't do it. Uh, she's going to ride it through, my friend. He said, the gates of hell. I'll build this church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If the church has to get together under a shade tree somewhere, and worship him he's gonna they're gonna worship him in spirit and in truth can I get a witness in the house today church you can separate me from others uh, but you cannot separate us uh, from the power and the presence uh, and the Shekinah glory of God uh, and his son Jesus Christ Woo, come on, let's praise him today, church. If we don't do anything else but this right here, I can say I was glad I, I came to the house of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord declare it and say so. They threaten them. They're going to threaten you. They beat them. They're going to beat us. It may not be physical, but they're going to try to abuse you with their words and their criticism and all that they can throw at us. But let me tell you, the gates of hell will not prevail against the blood-bought church of the living God. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know about you, tell, I'm, I feel like having a little church today. And you say, well, you're preaching to the choir. Well, sometimes the choir needs to get fired up. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. What a powerful name. What a great name. No other name like the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, the fact is, today you can say you believe in Eastern mysticism and people will consider you to be enlightened. You can say the word God and sometimes people do not have a problem with that. Because literally, in their mind, there are all sorts of gods, little g, that are out in the world. But don't mention the name of Jesus in some circles because the reaction is often times of mockery, anger, and rejection. Come on, are you still praying for the pastor? Condescension. Uh, from the media elites and many in our society. This, however, should not take any of us by surprise. Didn't it not Peter that described, quoting the Old Testament, that Jesus would be the stone that the builders rejected? 
And yet Jesus has become the chief cornerstone. A stone that may cause people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall, according to 1 Peter chapter 2. But then he adds the following. They stumble because they disobey the message. In the end, we have to remember, church, that our struggle today is not against people. Our struggle today is not against flesh and blood. As we are told in Ephesians 6 and Ephesians 5, the truth is that it is Satan who tries to stop us from declaring and, de and saying the name of Jesus. And he has been trying this for a long time. He tried it with the apostles and he's trying it today in the 21st century. Why would this spiritual battle wage like this? Why would Satan fight us so hard over the name of Jesus? It's because even Satan knows uh, that there's so much power in that name. Hallelujah. You're saying today it's just some little name, hocus pocus, uh, mantra. No, I'm not saying the name of Jesus is that. I'm saying and when you use the name of Jesus as a believer with faith uh, and obeying the Holy Spirit as you declare his name, uh, Jesus' power is going to empower you. Uh, his glory is going to come upon your life. Uh, you're going to be different than everybody else. Uh, you're going to go against political correctness. Uh, you're going to go against some of the cultural norms. Why? Because Jesus uh, has come to bring a revolution He's come to bring down religion and false idolatry and all wickedness in all places. Why? So that only he can be glorified and magnified and declared as king of kings. Oh, come on, somebody help me praise him today. No other name. Like the name of Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, there's power in the name of Jesus. Don't ever be ashamed or intimidated. Instead, as the church, let us cherish and exalt his priceless name. Jesus told his disciples during the great commission of the church, go into all the world in Mark 16 and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Watch this. And these signs shall follow those who believe. Do we have any believers in the house here? In, watch as Jesus says, in my name, in the name of Jesus, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. In my name, they will take up serpents. In my name, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not by no means hurt them. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is what happens when you preach and teach daily the name of Jesus. One time the Bible says in Acts chapter 3, in the early church, and I'm getting ready to close. Come on, Lagana, get ready. Peter and John were going up to the temple to pray. And there was a man laying at a gate called Beautiful. And there at that gate called Beautiful, there was something really grotesque that was happening. There was a person that was there who had a disability and was not able to walk. And he'd been like that so long since his birth. But the Bible says as Peter and John begin to go pray, this man was there and he was doing the same thing he had always done all of his life. He was asking for help. How many knows there's a lot of people today we rub shoulders with everywhere that really, even, even if they don't understand they're asking for it, they're still asking for help today. Their actions say they're asking for help. And 
He said, I need help. He was asking for money. You know the story. Peter and John had compassion. They were full of the Holy Spirit. And when they saw this man, I'm, I'm convinced this wasn't the first time they had seen him. But this day, God had ordained a holy encounter. Peter and John, and I'm paraphrasing it, but they told the man, look upon us. We're common. We've been fishermen most of our lives. We, we don't have the kind of means that you're probably wanting. You know, that's the thing about needing help. I've learned that sometimes the enemy has a way of Getting a person not just to lack in their material goods, but it, the spirit of limitation begins in the mind. And in his mind, he was just trying to get by for another day or another week. But what Peter and John came to a conclusion to is while they did not have silver and gold like he was asking for, they still were not bound by a spirit of limitation. Woo, glory to God. You know the story. They looked at that man, and they said, Sir, silver and gold, have we none? But such as we have, we give you what we've got. And what we've got is the power and the authority and the demonstration of someone who's greater than silver and gold. In fact, he's the one that created all the silver and he created all the gold. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the son of the living God. He was hung on a tree. He was buried, but the grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep him. The devil didn't know what to do with him. Amen. Pilate and everybody else conspired to tell the soldiers that spread the rumors uh, somebody has stolen his body but can I tell you they didn't steal his body Jesus told his disciples earlier if I've got the power to lay my life down I've also got the power on the third day to take my life up again and on the third day Jesus uh, the stone was rolled away and he came out with victory over death death, hell, and the grave, resurrection, and life, the first fruits of God's power. He said, we don't have silver and gold, but we've got something else. We've got resurrection power. We've got the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And everybody saw what happened next. This man who had been disability, had been disabled since birth, all of a sudden his ankles received strength. His knees received strength. His body received strength. And he started leaping up in the air and praising. And God, can I tell you this this morning, church? We've got the power. It's in the name of Jesus. Silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give it out today. We give Jesus to the world. Come on, somebody praise him today. Stand with me all over this place. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and tell them there's resurrection power in the name of Jesus. See, it's just not saying a name. It's being in relationship with the person whose name you're calling and declaring. See, Acts 19, there were some sons of Eskiva and they thought they would do what Paul was doing. They thought, well, well, we'll, we'll do some things in the name of Jesus. And when they did it, nothing happened. Why? Because the devil spoke back and said, these demons spoke back and said, 
Paul we know, in Jesus we know, but who are you? How many knows? If you're not a believer, if you're not a blood-bought child of God, the access to his name is, the authority is not there, but it's when your faith is in him, when you're in relationship with him. Guess what happens? You become a representative of Jesus. You become an ambassador of the cross, and you can declare with power and authority, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, we have been with Jesus hallelujah and we declare his name unto you come on everybody raise your hand and begin to praise him in the room come on Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is right here. He's as close as the mention of his name. He's here. He's been here the whole time. He's in your heart today. Go ahead and magnify him. Go ahead and honor him. Go ahead and praise him. I believe we're about to experience the weight of his glory in a new way right now in this room today. Hallelujah. 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 Gloria Gaither wrote a song one time. And nobody said it as good as she has, so I'm going to quote her. She said, there's something about that name. The mention of his name can calm the storm, heal the broken, raise the dead. At the name of Jesus, she writes, I've seen sin-hardened men broken, derelicts transform, the light of hope put into the eyes of a hopeless child. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love and forgiveness and arguments cease. You know we need to be declaring in our homes and our families the name of Jesus. You know we need to be declaring and claiming over our city, the city of Louisville and the surrounding. We need to be declaring as we are and continue to declare no other name but the name of Jesus. Maybe you just need to declare that name. We're going to pray here. Maybe you need to declare that name in your own life today. Hallelujah. He is here. He is here. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're in this room. Pastor Diana, would you come help Pastor here a minute? Pastor Jerry, would you come help me? You're up here close. We've been praying on Wednesday nights. And our, our motto around here, if you hadn't heard Pastor say it lately, it's become this. Let God be God. That's my heart. That's the way my heart's beating. Let God be God. All the tradition, all the ritualistic stuff, all the, hey, look, we're in a time today, we just need to let God be God. Come on, have I got a witness in here today? And we're going to close with a mighty prayer in here. And we, I want Diana and Jerry, Pastor Jerry, I want them to lead us in some prayers. Before we leave, Pastor Doug, you're having surgery this week. I want to pray over you. I believe Holy Spirit's going to touch you and strengthen you today. If you want special prayer... And while we're praying this, you just want to, as an act of faith, come forward and stand up front. I'm not even going to come by. Uh, I don't feel that in my heart today. I would if I felt that. But sometimes you just need to take a step of faith. And if you just want to come out here and just step as an act of faith and say, while these are praying, I'm claiming the name of Jesus over my family. I'm claiming the name of Jesus over my love. I'm claiming the name of Jesus. Some's already come up here. If that's you, maybe you need a healing today. Can I tell you, people were healed in the name of Jesus. They shall lay hands on the sick, 
and they shall recover. Amen. What's your first name, man? Harold. How many's glad Harold's here today? Come on, man. He didn't get here by accident. The Lord brought him to us today. Amen. The Lord brought him to us today. Amen. Let's pray and let's declare. We're praying for our president today. I heard my president yesterday say this. He said that these therapeutics and these drugs that are coming down the pike, he said it's so incredible what's going on. This is what he said. He said it's like they're miracles sent from God. Now some people get all bent out of shape. When my president mentions or reference God, but I'm thankful I have a president that knows how to look up and honor God in everything that's going on in our nation today. Come on, church. Let's pray for our first family today. Why don't you start us out, Diana? Just come on. Let's pray. Yes. Oh, yes. That all the devils in hell can raise all they want to, but they are silenced when we mention the name of Jesus. Yeah, ba 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 ma 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 for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, come on. Yes. 